worry has always been that that discussion has always been done in a very political environment. The discussion of whether it's two and a half years, three years, four years, or beyond, has been done in a very political environment. But there are other things that we can do. We can look at international best practices. So we've seen the 15-year-old Singaporeans, how long did they spend in school after uh, primary? We've seen the Koreans, we've seen the Austrians, we've seen the Finns. How long did they spend in school? So what is the norm? And what exams are they taking? The IB, the IGC, IGCSE, the A-levels? And what is the content? So how does ours compare with theirs? Once we know what an 18-year-old Ghanaian child should be able to do, then we can look at the curriculum and decide how many years will be required to deliver at the curriculum. Put aside the politics, put aside the three years, four years debate. It's quite useless. The more important thing is what can 18-year-olds do and how many years do they need to deliver that. Once we do it, we'll find whether it's three years or four years or five years or whatever. I think they spend too little time in school. Two and a half years, you go to Atimotan school two, for two and a half years. There's nothing that the school can put through you apart from helping you to pass the exams. You won't do sports, you won't do arts, you won't do music. The only time you come in uh, touch with the uh, culture is Founders Day. Even that one, there's, no much, there's not much time to, uh, to practice for it. So how do we ensure that our schools are able to influence the kind of the curriculum and this presentation should be more engaging and more challenging. 